the life of Lord Mahavira, Last Calamity Nails in the Ears, Part 2 of 3, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on December 24, 2019, in Taiwan, also known as Formosa. Okay, now I am reading something for you. This is the last calamity for Lord Mahavira, namely nails in the ears. It's terrible. Imagine that. Okay, be prepared. Okay, otherwise you might feel too too shocked and too too painful mentally. Yeah. After spending the 12 monsoon stay of his period of practices in Champa, Lord Mahavira Swami arrived outside a village named Chamani and stood in meditation. It was dusk and a cowherd was returning home from his farm. He said, Ascetic, please look after my oxen. I will return in a few minutes. By the way, cameraman, you have to also some some show this side sometimes, yeah? It's by us, you know, because I saw on TV mostly only show this side. Yeah, and this side, uh, just a split second sometimes. What have you against the men? Huh? <laughs> My men. Huh? <laughs> My handsome men, huh? Yeah. Somebody else, husbands, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but we also married somehow, you know? Spiritually, different relationship, yeah? And I'm glad it's that way. <laughs> Actually, like uh, Mother Teresa, she also wear a ring. And like uh, all the nuns in her order, or maybe, maybe some other nuns in other orders as well, they wear, an, wear a ring. It symbolizes marrying to Jesus. Yeah, that's, so they stay single. Yeah? Be faithful to one husband only, <laughs> even though he no longer exists. Well, if they know what their husband look like now, if he ever come back, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he might not look the same. <laughs> Nobody looked the same all the time, during incarnations, after incarnations. I want to say something here. I want to put a calendar here. You know, when you think Lord Mahavira is just standing to meditate all the time, yeah, standing, and you think it's easy. It's not. Okay? We are not donkeys. Donkeys and horse, they can sleep standing. They have four columns to support them. <laughs> And even if you sleep, you know, with the two hands in the front of it, you don't feel the same like the donkey. They, they have different uh, mechanism, yeah? Makeup uh, of the body is different, yeah? Their power is different. They're born that way, they're endowed with that ability. We cannot. So the Lord Mahayavira, mostly he always stands. We read in this story that he's standing to meditate. The reason he did that, because he doesn't want to fall asleep. If you are sitting the way you are in samadhi, you know, it's very easy to fall asleep. <laughs> it's obvious, okay? <laughs> well, not when I'm there. Maybe you try very hard to, you know, to nod to my talk. But I'm not sure your eyes are also nodding at the same time. No? <laughs> very difficult for you, I'm sorry, because you have jet lag, right? and good excuse, and also eat a lot of good food, <laughs> yeah. And here, have nothing to do, no husband, no wives, no telephone, no computer, no business, nada. Only meditate. So it's easy to relax. Even if you have nothing to do, but if you stand for a long time, you, you feel tired. Yeah? Maybe maximum 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Maybe you can try at home. <laughs> uh, Better put a lot of cushion around, okay? 
because the way you sit, you already so easy to. <laughs> you love the earth, I know. So you always try to. <laughs> it's always like gravitate toward the earth somehow. So if you you stand long time, I worry about your floor. Okay, <laughs> you might put a dent everywhere. So better put cushion around in case, yeah. So maybe better just sit. Uh huh. So the cowherd just told the Lord Mahavira, <laughs> a ascetic, look after my cows, and then left just like that, as if the practitioners have nothing else to do but conveniently standing somewhere and then look after his household work. Like last time I told you in Taiwan, the Taiwanese people got sick so easily, and they took a lot of medicine easily, so they got more sick easily. So we have a lot of hospitals, even not enough, even one nun, the compassionate uh, Master Cheng Yen, I think, she has to found a foundation and gather all the good doctors and nurses to build some hospitals for Taiwan. The nun supposed to follow the Buddha, don't do much work, except in the ashram and follow the Buddha, go everywhere for alms or for preaching, or go around to preach to lay people, to awaken their aspiration for enlightenment. But she has to worry, take care of administrative problem, and getting the fund to build a hospital and organizing builders or architects or whatnot. It's not so easy to find architects everywhere. Even in our group, I think we have only two or three <laughs> architects. Yeah, I mean in Taiwan, eh? not talking about other abroad. We have more, of course, yes. So for a nun to be able to do that, she sacrificed a lot of her practice in time, yeah, because of her compassion. Like they call it zi qi, zi qi gong de hui, eh? What is it in Chinese? Zi qi gong de hui meaning compassionate, meritorious association. So in order to find all you know, these architects, you know, and builders and materials in a small island like this, it's not all that easy for her. I know that from my own experience. Or maybe she has better luck, she finds better architect, <laughs> better disciples, better builder disciples, or outside disciples, or outside non-disciples. Uh, I don't know. But my experience is totally very, very below zero disappointment. I also do not blame them, because maybe it's my price I have to pay. It's just that even if it's the price, it's difficult to find people to work. It's very unfavorable for my job, hmm? for my job. To organize things and to build things for all of you to come, to be comfortable, hmm? to sit comfortable against the element, especially for seven days, we have no, no break. Yeah, we have to meditate day and night. You should meditate at night also, you try. Yes, only one week is not much. I told you the story about, about Rosie Kaplow already, yeah? For two weeks long, they meditate in the temple, Japan, yeah. And if you sleep, they go and beat you. <laughs> not, not painfully, just to wake you up a little bit, yeah? <laughs> and... Lucky they don't have a lot of people there to meditate. If that temple have like you here, so much number, I think the, the monk would be very tired, <laughs> you know, going beating everybody, <laughs> all of you. Uh, I don't see anyone that, that not deserve to be beaten. Yeah? <laughs> I mean, in different timing, of course, you take turn, you know that. <laughs> okay, maybe the first group, take a relaxing posture, and then the next one. You take turns somehow, but even then, so many people to wake up, I think the monk will be very, very exhausted. So they meditate day and night for two weeks long, yeah? And after the retreat over, the master requested to meditate one more week. 
So Rosie Kaplow said, no, no, I can't. I'm American, I can't. Yeah, American, they have longer legs, you know, they're not used to with squashing on the floor, blah, blah, blah. But then the master said, you can do more than you think. Just sit, meditate. And he did it, like other monks in the temple. Hmm. Well, that was him, you know. If it's me, I don't know, okay? <laughs> I would just do like you do, like disciple, like master. <laughs> I just enjoy my dream, you know, <laughs> somewhere. I, sorry, I'm sorry, brother, sorry, sister. Who? Oh, not intentionally. <laughs> I'm telling you. People are so funny, you know. Not only they don't go into renunciation, to keep themselves progressed, you know, in the spiritual practice. They even see one who tried to practice, like he has nothing to do, who take care of my cows? Just like that. Last time there was another cowherd also told Lord Mahavira to take care of his cows. And then the cows got lost somewhere, and then he blamed him, and he beat him up, etc., etc., just like that. People in this world are truly funny, cruel, and so ignorant, so Ungood. I want to say bad, but I don't. <laughs> and sometimes when I'm talking to you, I'm in a present time all the time, and the story became like vividly present to me that I forgot to speak in the past tense. You should understand, <laughs> okay? Like instead of did, I say do. Huh? Instead of was, I say uh, is. It's okay, who cares? I'm not pretend to be an English professor and knowing all the English uh, grammar or stuff like that. Nowadays, I'm too busy sometimes. Like I, I wrote something, you know, comment on some of the, uh, the script, and I, I wrote the word Taiwan, but I say only Taiwan. I forgot the end at the end and continue writing. Uh, until later, somebody asked me, what is Thai, Thai what, Master? <laughs> <laughs> so I say, you guess, what else? Is there any other Thai around here? <laughs> I cover myself. <laughs> you know? I won't admit that I was wrong. <laughs> just one hand, just put it on and be quiet. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I put one L less or one T more, you know. Because I wrote quicker than I can think, quicker than my mind can react. The inspiration come out quick. Even during the working time, no, not just uh, during lecture or anything. So it's like that, you know, sometimes I write one N less or one E more, or who cares, you know, it doesn't matter, okay? I just want to let you know that I'm not a- uneducated, ça va? Yeah? In case any of you think like that, it's wrong. <laughs> think again. <laughs> I have a doctor degree, yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> for what? Yeah, for what? Just for fun. I couldn't make use of any of that doctor degree anyway. I don't even know where I put it right now. I keep moving all the time, you know. I f- forget many things. I lost many things. Oh, useless thing anyway, yeah. Whatever don't belong to spiritual realm is all useless if you lost it. They are only useful when you have to use it for more noble purposes, otherwise they are, they are useless. So the cow herd, after leaving the cow to the reluctant cowboy, Lord Mahavira, he left, just like that. Don't even wait for the Lord Mahavira to come out of Samari and not in agreement or not. Just say, take care of my uh, cows, you ascetic, and then left. <laughs> So the cowherd went into the village and returned a little late. The oxen had drifted away grazing. Not finding his oxen, he asked, Ascetic, where are my oxen? Uh, Typical. The Lord Mahavira was in deep meditation still and unaware of all this. Even if the Lord Mahavira wasn't in deep meditation, he still cannot pay attention to all the cows There are many of them, and his mind wouldn't be able to concentrate on such things. 
the cowherd, you know, asked him like that. So the master wasn't aware of anything like that. So the cowherd asked again and once again, and he did not get any response. He got irritated and shouted, You hypocrite! Are you deaf? Don't you hear anything? The Lord Mahavira still did not respond. When the soul went somewhere else, you know, so you hear nothing, you're not aware of things in this world at all. Absolutely. Why is it different also? Depends, yeah? Depends. Uh, Lord Mahavira is still in the beginning of his practice, yeah? Later on, he probably has to meditate with his eyes open and his ear <laughs> turn on. <laughs> because he will have a lot of responsibility later on, after he became completely enlightened and worthy to be a teacher, then he has to be all ears, all eyes, all day, 24-7. And that is for sure. So now this is still the time that he can go deep into the universe and enjoy his own domain and freedom. So he didn't hear nothing. So this cowherd lost his temper. You pretender, it seems that both your ears are useless. Wait a minute, I will give you proper treatment. Be prepared, you know, right? Okay, so he picked a long nail like a thorn from a nearby shrub. Oh, he, he picked a thorn, some thorns. It looked like a long nail from nearby shrub of cancer grass and pierced the ears of Lord Mahavira deeply by hammering the thorn in. Even such excruciating agony did not move Lord Mahavira from his meditation. Neither did it evoke any feeling of anger or aversion in him. Uh, they better not try it on me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't have any aversion, but I might have anger. <laughs> I will not hide, yeah? <laughs> I will give him something, a piece of my ears or my mind. It's terrible, okay. So maybe the Lord Mahavira was completely out of his body, which is lucky. Otherwise, it would be excruciatingly painful, more than we can imagine, yeah? It goes through your brain and goes to the other side. Completing his meditation in normal course, he went inside the village for arms. He arrived at the door of a trader named Siddharth. A friend of the trader was sitting with him. He was a doctor. Both of them gave pure food to Mahasraman with due respect. Dr. Karak told Siddharth, Friend, the face of this shaman has a divine glow, but there is a shade of tiredness too. Some inner pain is visible in his eyes. Maybe he did not feel pain, but some internal organs has pain. So these cells of the internal organs may be show the visible sign to the keen, keen doctor. Good doctor, yes. I feel this great saint suffers from some inner agony. Even then he didn't say anything. My God, what a holy saint. Siddharth reply, Friend, if such a great saint suffers from some kind of pain, we should immediately go and treat him. After taking arms, Mahasraman returned. Taking Dr. Karak with him, uh, he mean the Lord Mahavira took arm already, so he returned to to his meditating uh, place at that moment. And then uh, Shidat uh, took the Dr. Karak with him to go to find uh, Lord Mahavira where he is sitting, where he rested. <laughs> 